So we've introduced the gradient projection algorithm now. Um, and importantly, we've got a bit of an intuition uh, for it. Uh, let's take a look at how it works in practice now. So this is um, still our incomplete gradient projection algorithm, um, but let's actually um, have a little bit of a play with it, see if we can figure out how the numbers, uh, see if we can figure out how the numbers work. So here's a problem. Um, so we have a four dimensional uh, uh, convex quadratic uh, function that we're trying to optimize here. So it's got x1, x2, x3, x4. Um, and then we've got a bunch of constraints here that we've got to satisfy as well. We've actually got six constraints. So we've got these first two constraints here. So we've got to be within some region, right? So there's, there's a couple of um, regions just defined by linear, linear functions, by straight lines here. And then this, uh, uh, this third condition here is actually four constraints uh, in once we in, at once we've got to have that x1, x2, x3, x4 are all greater than or equal to zero. So they've all got to be um, equal to uh, they've all got to be positive. And we've got a um, uh, uh, an x naught where we're going to start from. We're going to apply one step uh, of the gradient projection algorithm, and I'll show you, show you how you can do this stuff uh, in MATLAB as well. So notice that um, uh, those four constraints, those positivity constraints there, I'm going to have to flip them around. I'm going to have to demand that negative xi is less than or equal to zero to make this problem be in the standard form. So we're going to use gradient projection uh, on this. And really the big thing that we need to do here is find what this descent direction is, which means that we need to construct this matrix PS. That's most of our work here. Um, and remember that the way that we construct PS is th actually through these bunch of steps here. So we need to know what our active constraints are uh, at, at, this, um, at this starting point x naught. We need to compute the gradients uh, for those uh, active constraints, the vectors, so we can form this matrix M, find the null space of that matrix M, and then uh, uh, this projection matrix PS is gonna be V naught times V naught transpose. So at this point, uh, it gets easier uh, to do this stuff uh, in, um, uh, in MATLAB uh, than here. So let's actually uh, figure out how we can uh, move across to MATLAB and we'll do some of this stuff there. Okay, so the thing that you need to uh, uh, figure out here uh, is you need to um, uh, uh, figure out which constraints are active uh, at X naught. So you need to figure out it, which of these um, uh, constraints G1 through to G6 um, are equal to zero when you plug in x naught. Now it turns out uh, that it's g1 and g2 and g6, right? So um, for this uh, starting point x naught at 2, 2, 2, 1, 0, um, you know, you, it turns out that you satisfy the first two constraints. You can see that you can satisfy constraint six because uh, x4 is equal to zero, right? So the fourth entry in this uh, vector x naught uh, is equal to zero. Uh, and it turns out these other two are satisfied um, as well, and they're the only ones. So let's actually just execute that cell, we'll write all this stuff uh, into memory, and then we can check uh, that in fact, G1 of X naught uh, is equal to zero, G2 uh, of X naught is equal to zero, and G6 uh, of X naught. I don't really need to check that one, but I will, and I get zero each time. So you can check that those constraints are satisfied. You can go through and check that the other uh, three constraints are not satisfied. So once we have that, we can we know that our index set, uh, our active constraints are constraint one, two, and six. So we can calculate the gradient uh, of these uh, of these constraints. So we need to differentiate g one, g two, uh, and g six. Right. So g six, um, uh, if you differentiate it, remember that constraint in standard form is that negative x four is less than or equal to zero. Um, so you differentiate that, and you get the vector zero 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 negative one. Uh, you get the vectors two one one four uh, one one two one when you differentiate the other two. So let's do. Let's. Uh, we'll just copy paste those in, and we'll store. We'll store those vectors. Um, and now we can form this uh, matrix M and the matrix M is uh, comprised of the, uh, uh, the transposes of each of these gradient vectors. So let's actually just uh, type that in uh, and we'll see what that looks like. So here's this matrix M and you can see that it's got uh, the vector C1, so the gradient of G1, that's that first uh, constraint 
uh, with the straight line. Uh, G2, if you differentiate that with respect to X1, uh, X2, X3, X4, you get this second row of the matrix M. And then obviously if I differentiate uh, negative X4 is equal to zero, I get that third row of M. And so this is the key for us. So now that I know what these um, active constraints are, I can form this matrix. And remember, I'm looking for feasible directions. I'm looking for directions that stay within this, uh, that keep all of these constraints active, but I want to create these orthogonal projections. So what I actually need now is to find the null space of that matrix M. So I need to solve uh, the set of equations M times X uh, is equal to zero. Now, that's not necessarily um, always a trivial operation. So MATLAB has a, um, has a special toolbox um, to do that. I mean, it's, it's trivial in principle, but depending on the nature of M, um, particularly how large it is, you might want to use different uh, computational techniques to do that. Um, you know, essentially, there's a shorthand uh, for us, and we don't actually need to go and uh, do that whole, um, do that by hand. We can just write null M, uh, and we get a vector here as a solution of that, and that's the null space of this special matrix M. And then the whole point is that PS, um, this important projection matrix is V naught times V naught transpose. Uh, so once you've got V naught, once you've got that null space, uh, you multiply it with its own transpose, you get a, um, uh, you get a, a matrix here with numbers in it. And it turns out these are actually sort of nice numbers if we, you know, if we use the rational uh, format uh, in MATLAB, um, then you know these turns out to be uh, the entries in PS turns out to be um, uh, have you know fractions of eleven. They need to be turns out to be multiples of one over eleven. So cool. Um, let's actually get out of. Let's go back to uh, to decimal format because that freaks me out too much. Now, what do we want to do with this? Uh, so now that I've got this um, uh, this projection matrix my descent direction, my U naught, um, is going to be negative PS times the gradient uh, of F evaluated at X naught. So I need the gradient of my cost function, which is this, uh, which is this piece here. So I'll write that, I'll write that function in. So that's a vector uh, now. And I need to evaluate uh, a gradient of F uh, at X naught, multiply it by PS, and that'll give me U naught. So I'll type this out. So negative PS times gradient of F evaluate at my starting point x naught, that gives me a vector. Uh, if I do this in, we look at that there again. So this looks like um, you know, eight over 11, negative 24 over 11, eight over 11, and then a very, very small number. That's essentially just zero. Um, so just to tidy this up, to do some cosmetic surgery on this, if I multiply u naught uh, by 11, Right, to make to get rid of that uh, fraction of 11. Uh, and then I've got 8, a 24, and an 8. I divide everything by 8, and I get a U naught that looks a bit nicer. I get 1, negative 3, 1. And that's fine. You know, U naught is just a, a direction to head in. Um, and so, um, um, you know, it's fine to write it. Um, it's fine to write it like that. Okay, so now um, what next? Let's come back to, uh, let's come back to the algorithm. Yeah, let's look back at, so we've, you know, we figured out what PS is, right? Um, and what we want to do with that is I now need to, um, now that I know what uh, uh, I can calculate U, I've got my descent direction U, uh, I need to minimize uh, my cost function evaluated at X1, right? So now that I've got this uh, uh, X, uh, well, this expression for X1, I need to find the best step that I can take in that direction uh, that minimizes uh, um, that minimizes my cost function, subject to the fact that I've got to stay within my feasible set. Right, so this new point here, I've got to choose a lambda such that I don't leave my feasible set. Right? I've got to stay, uh, you know, within these uh, within these constraints one, two, and six that are activated at the moment. So there's actually a bit of work to do there, right? So if I plug in um, uh, if I write down uh, x1, you know, my new point in terms of lambda, I've got to check that all of the constraints are satisfied, right? So I've got these six constraints. Uh, I've got to uh, check that they're all satisfied. And that's what that looks like uh, in these um, equations, uh, in these inequalities here. Um, uh, if, you, if you do that, you see that you get some bounds on what lambda 
uh, is allowed to be uh, allowed to be equal to. So from this, you know, lambda has got to be between zero and two thirds. Um, I'll let you step through the algebra there, make sure you check all of those constraints. Um, you should see that lambda has got to be between zero and two thirds. Then I've got to actually find the lambda which minimizes my cost function. So, you know, um, in general, you might, this is a direct search problem. So you might want to do a um, dichotomous search um, or Newton's method uh, or, you know, golden section search or something like this here. Um, here, um, because of the, my cost function, this is just a quadratic. So we can do this by hand. Um, so this, the green text here is just minimizing uh, lambda uh, and the minimum turns out to be uh, uh, when lambda equals four elevenths, that is less than two thirds. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm in that region that lambda is allowed to, that satisfies the constraints. So that tells me how far uh, I have to step in that direction. So lambda turns out to be four elevenths. You should go through all the algebra there to check that. But for us, looking just up at my back up on my cheat sheet here, um, you know, uh, we've got just the lambda is, we can find out eventually, you can find it out analytically, or you could find it out numerically using an op another optimization, 1D optimization algorithm, that lambda is four elevenths. And so that gives me my new estimate uh, at the solution. So that's the one step uh, that I've taken uh, with the um, with the gradient projection algorithm. So the point of this is that this new value um, x1, and it doesn't really matter uh, what that x1 is, but the point is that I started off um, having three constraints active. So constraint one, uh, two, uh, and six being active um, for my x0. I've now taken a step, right? Um, and those three constraints um, are still active. Right, so I've still got constraint one, two, and, uh, and six active because that's the way that I set this up. And that's the, that's the way I found this descent direction. There's actually something important uh, that happens here, which is that I've got my new guess at the solution X1. It still satisfies my three constraints. Um, but if I were going to take another step now, and you can actually go and uh, do this calculation, you'll find that if I were to take, find, try and find a new descent direction, I'm gonna actually end up with that descent direction being equal to zero. Um, if you think about it, you know, um, I found the, the minimum uh, along this set of active constraints. Um, well, all these constraints are active. There's sort of nowhere else for me to go there to improve, um, uh, uh, to improve my, um, you know, how close I am to the minimum, to the global minimum while being on those three constraints. So U turns out to be zero in the next step. Um, and I'm actually, and I actually get stuck. So there's an important thing that we have to do here. This is the something special that has to happen uh, in our gradient projection algorithm. If I try to take another step um, from here, I'll find that I can't, I can't move anywhere from X1 because I get my next descent direction is equal to zero. You calculate it um, and you'll find, uh, and you'll see uh, that that happens. So I can't actually do anything more with my gradient projection algorithm. I need something else to complete it. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, in the next video. Um, before we do, um, you should know, you know, there are other examples um, that you can step through uh, here. So there's another example in the notes. Um, example 4.24 is uh, talks you through a similar sort of idea. It's in 3D. So um, I'm not going to talk about this because to visualize what's going on with this, what, where the constraints are and where this point T is that you're trying to minimize, you have to cross your eyes. Uh, look at that stereoscopically. But it's a good example for you to look through, to read through, cross your eyes, do the stereoscopic prediction. You can sort of visualize um, what's going on here. So I'll leave that one for you. There's another example that you can talk about. Um, but yeah, um, for now, we know, you've seen how the machinery uh, of this thing works. Um, we've seen how the machinery of the gradient projection algorithm works. Um, at this point, we've hit a roadblock. U is equal to zero when we try to take a second step. So we can't go uh, any further. So what we do um, to get out of that, um, that being stuck, and that's exactly the thing we're gonna talk about in the next video.